You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop. To our content information, we want to get started with this video clip for your consumption and give it a thought and then process what the caller says and we'll come back and discuss it tonight and this will be the topic of our program tonight. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what you say. Okay. I believe that the moment is right. Well, you have... The only true church <clears throat> and I believe in it with all my heart. Well, you know what? Well, I'm... Do, I'm do I have to, to be... Do I have to... Does a person have to be in the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in order to get to heaven? I didn't say that. I, I, I know, I'm asking. Do they, ha do they have to be in the Mormon Church in order to be saved? No, they don't. So and why, I'm so why me, so here's the, here's the, here's the question on my No, no, I want to ask, I want to follow up a question. If I don't have to be in the Mormon Church to be saved, no. then why should, then why even be in it at all? Because I believe in it. You said, you said earlier it's the true church. It is. Well, if it's the true church, why don't I have to be in it? You still, regardless of what church you're in, you still got to live and 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 trust in God in order to <clears throat> go to heaven. Well, well, this is. And if you are not, you don't go. You don't. You get me confused, ma'am. Well, I'm not getting you confused, ma'am. I'm not getting you confused. What's getting you confused is the fact that. You want to say the Mormon church is the only church, the true church, but yet you don't have to be in the Mormon church in order to get to heaven. Now, that's confusing. Yeah. If the Mormon church is the true church, and you said it is, the only true church, if that's the case, my question to you is, if a person wants to get to heaven, do they have to be in the Mormon church? And you said no. Now... Look, what God's the? in every church. I'm sorry? God is in every church. Condemning my church has really hurt me because, you know, you shouldn't do that. Well, you shouldn't condemn I'm, my I'm not church. condemning your church. The Bible is condemning it. You can't find the Mormon church in the Bible, and you're sitting here telling the community that it's the only true church. Now, when you say it's the only true church, now, am I quoting you right? Is yes. The, the Mormon church is the only true church. Now, if the Mormon church is the only true church, then that means all the other churches are not the true church. Is that right? I didn't say that. Well, you, you can't have it both ways. You said the Mormon church is the only true church. Now, if it's the only true church, that means all the other churches, everything that's not the Mormon church, is not the true church. Now, you can't have it both ways. So who is actually condemning all these other churches? Now, <clears throat> friends, that's, that was an interesting cause a call from several years ago. And I just want you to think about what she's saying because we're going to be discussing the one true church and what does it mean to be the one true church. Is it the case that you can have the one true church but not be the only church? In other words, is there a way that you can be the part of the one true church but not the only church? Maybe the one but not only true church? I don't know how else to say it because that's how people are thinking it. But friends, when we're talking about a word from the Lord, we're trying to get to the root of what God wants for us. And the way you do that is you get to the Bible and you reason together. And that's what we're trying to do. So if you're out watching tonight and you're wondering about what, what the lady said and and how are we going to find the truth when so many people are confused, like the lady who called in, then that you're watching the right program. If you'd like to reach me, at word lord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me on my cell phone. And uh, I'd be glad to study the Bible with you anytime. Because, friends, what we're trying to do is trying to stop confusion like what we just heard. Now, I'm not making fun of the lady, but she, she said... She's getting confused. And the problem that she was having was she was convinced that the church she was a member of was indeed the one true church. <clears throat> but she didn't want to say everybody else was wrong. Now, friends, you just can't have it both ways. You can't say 
that you're part of the one true church and then say God is in all churches. It just doesn't work that way. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to first we're going to start by defining some terms. You know, if you're talking to individuals, sometimes you'll be saying something and you'll use a word or a term or phrase and they mean it something else. They mean it, they mean it in a different way. I remember talking <clears throat> to uh, Dr. Jerry Carter over here at Regional Baptist and uh, when I was asking can people fall away and, uh, and, and be lost, he said, he said no, I, didn't, I didn't say they couldn't fall away. He said they, they can fall away. They can backslide. Well, see, when he said fall away, he meant backslide. He didn't mean be totally lost. Well, when I said fall away, I meant totally lost. So we had to define some terms there. Well, friends, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to determine, is there a way that there can be one true church, like the lady said, and at the same time, all other churches be just as true or be just as only, I guess you might say. One and only true church, and yet it includes all others. Or is it just an exclusive title? Now, when I say define some terms, let's talk about this. Let's determine, let's just look at the, at the definition of only. <clears throat> when you say only, when, there's, when I say there's only one church, this is what I mean. I mean there's, it's alone in its kind or class. It's by itself. It is the sole uh, kind, all right? It's the only one there is, the only one left. I mean, just by itself. If you're home alone, that means there's no one else there, all right? It means standing alone or by reason of, of superiority or excellence. Well, that's what I say. When I'm talking about the church that I'm a member of, I submit to you that when I say the church of Christ is the only church, this is what I mean. I mean that it is superior or excellent to any other churches. You know why? Because all the other churches are made by men. Now, someone's going to get upset. Someone's going to get mad. <clears throat> I read a comment uh, t this afternoon on uh, uh, one of the, our YouTube videos, <clears throat> and the man said, James, I agree with your methods, but, but you, just, you just drive people away by being so mean. If people get mad, then you're doing something wrong. Well, I haven't answered him, but I got news for you. Jesus made people mad. Stephen made people mad. Paul made people mad. Peter made people mad. People getting mad does not mean that you're doing something wrong. So don't get mad when I say this. I just want you to realize where I'm coming from. I'm saying that the church of Christ is the only one of its kind. And that's why it's the only true church. But if you're getting mad at me for saying that, I want you to realize other people say it too. You say it too. You believe it about the church you're in. You just don't want to say it. Only means that it's without anyone or anything else. It's alone. All right. Well, there's no room for any other kind of church when we're talking about the church that, that Christ built. It means nothing else or more. There's no, nothing you can add to it, nothing you can take away from it. It's, it's, it's alone. Exclusively or solely. Now, when we're talking about the one true church, we're talking about exclusiveness. Exclusiveness. It's the only church of its kind. Now, is there a way that you can be part of a church that is exclusive, that is, alone, uh, that is only, that is the only one of its kind, and yet include churches of different kinds? See, when you're talking about only, you, you're, you're eliminating everything else. Now, here's another word, exclusive. Now, the reason why we're looking up the word exclusive, because notice, it's, it's defined it's a definition of only. So let's make sure we know what we're talking about when we say exclusive. Exclusive means that it excludes everything else. All right? It does not allow something else. It's incompatible with something else. It's mutually exclusive. All right? That means everything else is excluded. So when you say one thing, that excludes everything else. If you go to the restaurant and you tell them, Tell the waitress, <clears throat> I want a Dr. Pepper. You know what? That excludes everything else. That excludes iced tea. That excludes 7-Up. That excludes Sprite. That excludes Coke. That excludes Pepsi. That excludes everything. You told her what you want. See that? So when you're talking about the church 
being the one true church, like the lady said, she said the, the uh, church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was the true church, the one true church. Well, she's talking about it being exclusive. It is the exclusive church that she says. Well, this is what that means. That means it, it excludes everything else. It's outside of everything else. It's not divided or shared with others. Now, that's what I'm talking about. When I say the church that I'm a member of, the church I read about in the Bible, I say that it is an exclusive church. That is, it does not share <clears throat> its same uh, lofty position in the eyes of God. It does not, it's not share its, uh, uh, the blood of Christ with anyone else. It does not accompany anyone else. It doesn't go along. Now, when she says, well, God is in all. Well, see, she's including she says God is included in all churches, but yet she already excluded them. Are you with me? All right, that's what exclusive means. If, if you exclude something, you, you take it away. You, you're, you're removing it from everything else. Excluding some or most as, as from membership or participation. So if, you, if you're a member of the country club out here and you want to play golf, you can go because you are an exclusive member. But people who are not members, they can't play. All right? They can't go in. It is an exclusive club. Only individuals with, with a black tie can get into this party. You see that? You've excluded everybody. So if you don't have a ticket or an invitation, you are excluded. All right? You're, you're removed. Well, that's what the church does. The church actually is an exclusive uh, organization. That is, people are excluded from it. Because if they haven't met the conditions for membership, they are not included. Now, if you include something, that means you bring it in. But if you exclude something, that means you keep it out. So when I say the one true church, when I'm talking about the church that you read about in the Bible, I'm talking about an exclusive organization, an exclusive group. Only certain individuals are members of the Lord's church. That's why it's the one true church. Now, when I say that, I don't have a problem excluding everybody else. But my point is, friends, everybody else seems to have a problem excluding other people. They want to be exclusive, but yet they want to include somebody else. Now, look at this. One true church. The one exclusive true church. Now, true means that it's consistent with fact or reality. All right? It's not false. It's not erroneous. It's real. It's a genuine article. Real thing. Real deal. All right. Well, that means it's true. So when you say the church you're in is the one true church, you're talking about it's consistent with fact. You're saying it's consistent with what is true. That it's real. That it's genuine. That it's not a counterfeit. Well, I don't have a problem with people saying that. But if someone's going to claim that something is true, then I'm going to, I want some verification. I want to make sure that it is true, that it's a genuine article. Now, if someone handed you a, a $100 bill, or I don't know, let's say something that's not quite as unique as a $1,000 bill, <clears throat> someone said, if someone handed you a $1,000 bill, would you know if it's real or not? See, if someone handed me a $1,000 bill, I'd be very skeptical. I'm going, to, I'm going to go check out what are some marks that should be on a $1,000 bill. I'm going to find out. I want to find out if it's real or if it's genuine. I want to know if it's true. Is this truly a $1,000 bill? Or is someone just trying to scam me? Someone trying to, uh, you know, trick me, cheat me? So if something is true, it's consistent with fact or reality. It's not, it's not false, all right? It means that if it's true, it's fundamental. That is, it is essential. Now, I asked the lady, you recall on that video clip, I asked the lady, is the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? She says, the one true church. She believed it. I just believe it's the one true church. Is it essential to salvation? See, if something is true, that means it's essential. All right? It's real. It's legitimate. It's rightful. All right? So... If you say the one true church, the church you're in is the one true church, you're saying it is essential to salvation. That it is part of the truth. Now, friends, the only way you're going to verify if the church you're in is the one true church 
is by going to what you know to be the truth. It has to be consistent with this. Now, I find it very interesting, however, when people talk about being in the one true church, then they want to turn around and they want to be inclusive. Now, the words we just looked at, the words we just looked at, true, exclusive, only, those are very specific words. They are very exclusive words. That means they are very limited in scope. All right? There's not, there, there is not a whole bunch if you've got only. If you've got true, that excludes everything that's not true. And if you, <clears throat> and, and if you have, uh, uh, if you have something that is uh, excluded, all right, everything else is is neglected or left out. So you got the one exclusive true church. But when people say that, they want to be part of that exclusive group, but then they turn around and they want to be inclusive. Again, you remember what the lady said? She said, well, God is in all churches. That means they are inclusive. That means you take everything within a scope, you know, the big umbrella, big tent. We're going to include everybody, you know. He got the whole world in his hands, so to speak. God loves everybody. Well, God does love everybody. But that doesn't mean that everybody is included in his church. That doesn't mean that everybody is included in, uh, uh, in uh, doing his will. So if you're talking about something that's inclusive, that's the opposite of exclusive. That means you include things from all extremes. Look at this. Including the specified extremes or limits as well as the area between them. Now, I find it very, very interesting when you start talking about inclusiveness, there's a lot of people that don't really want to be inclusive even though they, want to, they say they're inclusive. They can't make up their minds. They want to be in the one true exclusive church, but because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, they want to include everybody. But then when they get to include everybody, you know what they then turn around and do? They exclude them. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to prove that before we get to this lesson tonight. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to use some biblical examples to show how silly it is to use exclusive terminology. We're talking about, we're talking about using terms that exclude everything else like we're talking about terms like exclusive or only, true, and then see if it works to include things outside of that. All right? So you just imagine a circle. Draw a circle, and inside that circle is everything <clears throat> that is true. Now, if you include something else, that means you're including things outside that circle. That just doesn't work when it comes to finding out what God's will is. Now, let's, let me ask you this. When you read the Old Testament and you read what God wanted from his people, could Old Testament worshipers sacrifice to the Lord, God, Jehovah? Could they sacrifice to him and to any other God and still be pleasing to God? Now, you're going to immediately say, well, no, James, that's silly. I mean, look what the Bible says, Exodus 22, verse 20. He that sacrifice, sacrificeth unto any God, save unto the Lord only. Now look at that. Here's the exception. If you're going to sacrifice, you have to sacrifice unto the Lord only. Otherwise, you'll be utterly destroyed. Now that's not a very inclusive phrase. That's a very exclusive phrase. Now, can you imagine someone going, well, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice to the Lord God Jehovah, but I'm also going to sacrifice to Baal. I'm also going to sacrifice to Chemosh. I'm also going to sacrifice to Molech and Milcom. I'm also going to sacrifice to uh, <clears throat> Marduk and all these other gods. Friends, you, you can't sacrifice to the true and living God only and then turn around and, and include all these other false gods. You just can't do it. So, you see what I'm talking about? The same principle that you have people today saying they want to be 
in the one true church. The lady said the, the church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints, is the one true church. It's the one true church. She believed it. It's the one true church. But, but she's not going to say that everybody else is excluded. Now, friends, do you mean to tell me that Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Jehovah's Witness, Pentecostals, Catholics, that they are part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? That's what the lady said. She had to say it because she included them. See that? But that's not the way God, that's not the way God talks. That's not what the Bible reveals, what God wants. That's not truth. In Matthew 4 and verse 10, let's look at another one. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, <clears throat> for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now let me ask you a question, friends. If someone were there with Jesus in the wilderness, someone from today were there with Jesus in the wilderness, they would probably be tempted to tell to Jesus, well, now, Jesus, you, you can't exclude that. <clears throat> you can worship Satan and God and still be pleasing to God. Even though God said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, if only is a term that God uses to talk about who, can, uh, uh, who you're to worship, that excludes the devil. That excludes false gods. That excludes man. So when I turn around and say, is the church you're in the one true church? Is it the only church that Christ built? Is it the only church that Christ died for? Is it the only church that's essential to salvation? If you really believe that the church you're in is indeed those things, you have to say yes and exclude everything else. But what it tells me is people want to be part of the one true church. They want to be in that exclusive group, but they didn't want to turn and include everybody else. Well, friends, I don't want to be in a group that is so exclusive that it includes everybody else. That's not part of a group. <clears throat> That's not a very special group. See that? If you have some, if you have a, a, a club, you know, and uh, you say, well, we're only going to open this club up to, to guys. You know, I think about Calvin and Hobbes. I love Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin, Calvin's a little boy, if you know what I'm talking about, Calvin and Hobbes has a pet t uh, tiger that he, or make believe tiger. And he has, he has a club, you know. It, it, it's, it's gross, G-R-O-S-S, get rid of of silly girls with an S. Now, can you imagine Calvin saying this is an exclusive club for boys, guys, and then including little Susie? <clears throat> little Susie? Susie would not get in that club. You know why? It's an exclusive club. Now, <clears throat> if God said, Him only shalt thou serve, that excludes everybody else. We're talking about exclusive <clears throat> language. <clears throat> is it possible to use language such as only and then turn around and include things that are excluded? See, that's a contradiction. Look at this in John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then verse 18 says, And no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Is Jesus Christ the only begotten Son? Now if I'm talking to people today and I'm using their reasoning ability and their logic, they would say that there's another begotten Son, that Jesus is not the only begotten Son of God. Now, is he or is he not? If you believe the Bible that Jesus is the only begotten of the Father, the only begotten Son, in this sense, you, you have to say everybody else is excluded. God only had one Son. And it was Jesus. Now, you can't include everybody else. 
You can't include anybody else. That is exclusive. The only begotten son only excludes everybody else. John 3, 16, the verse everybody loves to quote. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, is there another son that he could have given? Was there another son that was available for him to give that people could believe in in order not to perish and have everlasting life? No. It is excluded. He is the exclusive, the only one of his kind, the only begotten son. Now, friends, you apply that to the church. The one true church, the only church you read about in the Bible is an exclusive church. It's an exclusive group. And it was bought and paid for by the only begotten Son of God. Now, are you part of the one true church? Are you really going to include everybody else? Even though God has excluded everybody else? If you're not a part of the Lord's church, then you can't be included in the Lord's church. The one true church is an exclusive church because the way of salvation is an exclusive way of salvation. Look at this. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, is it possible to come to the Father by Jesus only and some other way? If Jesus is the only way to the Father, friends, there is no other way. And if the church that we're talking about, the church we're trying to find, the church that, that Jesus bought and paid for with his blood, if it's the only church in the Bible, you know what? It's going to exclude anything else. Now, you see what we're talking about? Exclusive terms. Terms that exclude, that, that limit how big or how, how wide you can, you can uh, what, what is taken in by it. Go ahead and put the phone lines up if you will, Matt. Now, is there more than one way? Is there more than one way to heaven, to the Father? No. Jesus is the only way. Let's look at it again. In Acts 4 and verse 12. <clears throat> Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Is it possible to have salvation <clears throat> through Jesus only and through some other way? Now, listen, we're accused all the time of, of, of believing in work salvation. Oh, y'all believe in work salvation, work salvation. But you know what? Really, those who accuse us of believing in work salvation are the ones that do all the work because they, they take away, they say, well, here's a way that's not even talked about. And we're going to get to heaven this way. The way we're talking about is in the book. See, if the way you get to heaven is not in this book, friends, you're finding another way. You think there must be another way to get to heaven. And that's just not possible. Because this is the only way. There is, uh, neither is there salvation in any other. That is very, very exclusive. There's no salvation in James. There's no salvation in John. There's no salvation in Tom, Peter, Frank. There's just no salvation in any other. None other name under heaven. It's exclusive. Tell me who's going to save you. Tell me who gives you the authority, the power to save. Tell me who died for your sins. There's only one person that has the authority to save. Now, it's not possible. It's not possible for salvation through any other means other than Jesus. So why is it then, why is it then, when people talk about salvation, they want to exclude things that Christ didn't include? Why do they want to include things that Christ didn't, didn't include? They want to bring things in that Christ never talked about. Now, friends, this is what we're getting down to. We're getting down to the fact that people recognize <clears throat> certain things are right, yet they just have a hard time admitting it. 
because they're afraid of what people are saying or what they'll, how they'll think about them or how they view them. But in reality, friends, if you really love the truth and you're really seeking the truth and you believe that you have the truth, you should want to have that same mindset of, look, I have something that's better than anything else and I want you to have part of it. I want you to be included in it. I want you, I want you to, to have what I have. I want you to share what I, share, what I have. Now, if you really believe that you're part of the church, the one true church, the exclusive church, you wouldn't then turn around and include everybody else. But yet, that's what we're dealing with. Here's an, here's an example. Here's an example. <clears throat> no one would say that you can, ex, that you can uh, uh, find salvation in some other name. And here's how I know that. Listen to what this man says. Came out of the Baptist church, came out of the Methodist church in the Baptist church now. And listen to what he says, why he came out. Uh, I'm currently in attendance with the Baptist church. I'm in fellowship with Blessed Hope, in fact. Why are you? Why am I? Yeah, doesn't the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God? You didn't hear God say for you to be in a Baptist church. Why are you over there? Just for the community, let us know. Because the word of the Lord is being preached there appropriately. Well, not, it doesn't tell you about the Baptist church. First thing, rattle out the box. You're inside of a building with people who claim to be God's people, and they don't even have a designation or an, an, an authority to exist. They claim to be Christians. Well, they can claim to be Christians. Jehovah's Witness claim to be Christians. Do you accept them? I mean, your church claims to be Christian. Uh, 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 sir, do you do you claim, do you accept the Jehovah's Witness? No, but we can try the spirits based on the Word of God. Okay, I'm trying y'all spirit. No, no, he was a Baptist, or he'd recognize him as a Methodist. So oh, you, we're not. playing games, sir. You know that you adhere to Baptist doctrine, and they adhere to Methodist doctrine, but you're trying to pretend like it don't concern you. No, my father's in attendance with the church that was formerly a Methodist church, but they realized that they weren't strong on their doctrine. So, oh, Christian sir. church now. Oh, sir, I just can't believe that you said that. My father. I, can't, I can't believe that you said that. You Why said not? that they, are, they realized they weren't strong on the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well, sure, of course. You said that they, are, they realized they weren't strong on the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well, sure. You said that they are, they realized they weren't strong in the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well, sure. Now, you have just admitted that the Methodist Church is wrong. No, I'm saying that the church that my father was with spoke. Formerly a Methodist. Right. Formerly a Methodist. You can't use one body to speak for the entirety. Okay, well, that particular Methodist Church realized, God be thanked, that they were wrong. Is that right? That they just didn't stand for, for instance, sprinkling. Okay, all right. Now, now, sir, I am so thrilled that you said that because I'm in agreement with you that sprinkling is not New Testament baptism. But guess what? The Baptists refuse to preach what Peter and Paul preached. I've never met a Baptist preacher, including yours, that would actually say, when somebody said, men and brethren, what must we do? Peter responded, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Now, will your preacher preach that? Not for the repentance of sins, no. That's a, that's a law concept. Oh, my. Well, what difference does it make if you sprinkle then? If it doesn't matter why you're going to be baptized, just go ahead and sprinkle. I can't believe you'd argue over if it's just a law concept anyway. You see what we're talking about, my friends? It's the idea that no one wants to come out and say that's wrong, but yet they do it. They do it. When, people, when, when the, when the uh, lady that we played at the very beginning, when she said that the Mormon church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was the one true church, and she firmly believed it. See? She, she was convinced of that, but yet she then turned around by, by saying that, what she did was she condemned everybody else, but she didn't want to admit it. And that's what this man did. This man turned around and said, well, the Methodists are wrong. These, these people changed because they realized the Methodists were wrong when it came to sprinkling. Well, that's, that's the point. You just excluded them. You said they're wrong. And everybody does that. Everybody who claims to be the one true church, claims to be part of the body of Christ, claims to follow Jesus, in the denominational world, they will turn around and then say, somebody's not part of it. Everybody does. Everybody dogs on the, on the Mormons. Everybody dogs on the Jehovah's Witness. Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're not part of it. 
They're not part of, of, the, of the Lord's church. They're, they're not real Christian. They're, they're a cult. Well, you just included everybody. You include everybody except them. What did you do? You accepted them. You pushed them out. You excluded them. Why? Because they are not doing something according to truth. And that's how you find out what the true church is. You find out what is true based on what God's word is. And that's all we're asking you to do, friends. We're asking you to examine the church that you are in and see if you can find it in the Bible. See if you can find its practice in the Bible. See so if you can find the teachings that you uh, adhere to in the Bible. Just see if it follows up or lines up with the truth. Then you can know if you're in the one true church, the exclusive church, the church that belongs to Jesus Christ, the church that he died for. And you can find that out just by looking at the truth. So you can try the spirits like the, like the caller said, and you can find out if it's even close. But friends, it just doesn't make sense to say, it just doesn't make sense to say that you are part of the exclusive church that Jesus built, that he died for, and then turn around and include people that you, that you turned around and condemned. You with me? You can't, you can't say that you are part of the exclusive body of Christ and by saying that, exclude people, say they're not part of it, and then turn around and say, but they're part of it. You can't have something that is, uh, that's a contradiction. That's like saying this wood is all, or this table is all wood, but it's all metal as well. It just can't be. It cannot be all of two things. It may be part wood and part metal, which it is. But it's not all wood and at the same time all metal. It just doesn't work that way. But that's what people say when it comes to the church. When it comes to religion, they want to be all in the exclusive one and only church, which means that everybody else is excluded, and then turn and say that they're included. Here's what I mean. Here's a good example of what I mean. This is an old email got some, some time back. <clears throat> but in this email, this man's talking about, he's a, he's a Baptist, and he's talking about how, uh, how wrong we are. And look what he says. He says, your cult, uh, your cult is sending people to hell because you do not preach the gospel. No church of Christ is, men is mentioned, no church of Christ mentioned in the Bible. Now just stop there for a minute. No church of Christ mentioned in the Bible. Friends, I can find church of Christ mentioned in the Bible. Romans 16, 16, Paul said, The churches of Christ salute you. All right? The church of Christ, which is in God. It's, it's in the Bible. The church of Christ is mentioned in the Bible. He says, I'm glad I'm part of the church of God. Well, previously he said he's a Baptist, but now he's part of the church of God. Then he says, Christian by birth, Baptist by choice. Now wait a minute. If you're part of the church of God, do you get a choice to be a Baptist or not? See, when you say I'm part of the church of God, you exclude Baptists. You have to exclude them. You have to exclude the Baptist church because the Baptist church is not mentioned in the, in the Bible. Now yeah, church of God is mentioned in the Bible. You, but you can't, you can't include the Baptist in something that God excluded. How do I know God excluded? That he left out the Baptist church because he left it out of the book. That's exactly what he did. He left it out. He excluded them. If he had included the Baptist church, he'd talked about it. He'd have written about it within his pages. But you see what people do? They want to be part of the exclusive church, the church of God. But then he says... Baptist by choice. Friends, you just excluded yourself. You want to be part of the church that, that God included in the Bible, but yet you want to be a member of a, of a church that he excluded. He left it out. You can't be both. You cannot have it both ways. Now, why is it people feel that way? Why is it they think then that they can do this? You know why? Because they don't understand or really believe the true uh, exclusive nature of the church. 
the one true church does not include man-made churches. It just doesn't, do, just doesn't do it. All right? And here's another example. When someone says they're part of the one true church, they are they're contradicting themselves when they turn around and say, well, other churches are true too. Listen to what this, this Baptist preacher says. Uh, but I am convinced that for uh, in this day and time that the, uh, the, the autonomy of the local church, the independent fundamental Baptist church is the closest that I can find, James, that uh, uh, meets my needs uh, as a minister of the gospel. And I really believe that uh, uh, this is the Savior. Something. And I believe that the independent fundamental Baptist church today is the closest thing that I can find to that New Testament church. And that's why I believe as a... Uh, uh, a New Testament believer. Um, now the name Independent Fundamental uh, Baptist Church is traditionally used by uh, churches that pattern themselves after the example of the early church. There again I reiterate the fact that uh, Independent Fundamental Baptist Church is the closest thing uh, that, that I can find. That Alright, so the, the Fundamental Independent Baptist Church is the closest he can find. Now, you know, what he, you know what he's going to say? It's the closest he could find, but then he turns around and includes all other churches. He'd turn around and include Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Moravians. You know, they're, they're all going to be in heaven, he says. Well, friends, you, you can't say this is as close as, as I can find to the one true church and then include people that aren't close. I mean, how far away do you have to be to be part, to no longer be a part of the one true church? How far away do you have to be? You know, how close is, 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 is close enough? How close do you have to be? You know what? The fundamental independent Baptist church, it's not close enough to me, for me. It's not close enough to the Bible. Because I can't find it in the Bible. I can't find a Baptist church. I can't find a primitive Baptist church. I can't find a fundamental independent Baptist church. I just can't find it in the Bible. It's not, it's not close enough to be the one true church. And then Mr. Linderman said, he said, well, all these people, there are going to be some of all these people in heaven. He included them all. But he says, we don't have fellowship with the Catholics because they don't believe the same thing. Well, wait a minute. You're going to include them all in heaven, but you're going to exclude them down here? Which is it? You know, I don't like you down here, but I love you in heaven. Friends, I, I want to love you in heaven, so I'm going to love you down here. And I'm going to tell you right now, the only way I'm going to be able to love you in heaven is by telling you about the one true exclusive church, which is the one that Jesus bought with his blood, paid for, with his blood, built after he rose from the dead and put all saved people in it. Now that's the one true church. It's exclusive. Friends, why is it that we don't have a desire? Why is it we don't have a desire to be in the one true church? The one and only true church. Now, if you, if you really want to be part of the one and only true church, friends, you would leave man-made churches behind. But are we so afraid that we're going to hurt somebody's feelings by telling them they're not part of the one true church that we just don't tell them the truth at all? Is that, is that really what it is? I mean, what are you supposed to tell people? If the church they're in is not in the Bible, what do you tell people? Do you tell them that they're part of the church that's in the Bible, even though you know it's not? Or do you tell them that they're not part of the churches in the Bible and hurt their feelings? Friends, it's not, it shouldn't be a matter of hurting their feelings to tell them the truth. As Brother John Shannon said, I can tell you your face is not on a $5 bill. Don't get mad at me. It's just the truth. It's not on the $5 bill. Now, why are you getting mad at me if I tell you the church you're in is not in the Bible? It's not the one True church is not the exclusive church. You know, I was uh, 
I'm trying to find a, a uh, quote here. I don't know if I can find it or not. I might mess myself up here. From a uh, former president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And I want you to listen to what he says about about what it takes for the Baptist churches to grow. This is what he says. If I can get over and put it, I'm just trying to insert it right here. So give me just a minute. Here's what he said. Now I want you to look at this. Here's what he says. He's talking about growing the church, the church of Christ. He's talking about the church of Christ. And this is what he said. He said, I want you to look at the church of Christ. He said, if the Baptist church is going to survive, you need to be like the church of Christ. And he says, this is what was making the church of Christ grow. This is back in the 1970s. He said the church of Christ are anti-ecumenical in their relationships. That is, they don't believe that we're all one big family. They don't believe that we're just, uh, that they're just a tick on the dog or a flea on the dog. They, they don't believe that. They don't, they, don't, they don't play that way. They're anti-ecumenical in their relationships. They're conservative in their theology, autonomous and democratic in their congregational practice, without any semblance of denominational superstructure. He said they don't want to look like a denomination. He said the Bible teaching, they make rigid moral and ethical demands on members in such matters as social drinking. You know what? We used to. We used to do that. You know why? Because we believe we were the one true church. And we believe that we're not supposed to be like the world. But now, let me set the plow a little close here. Now we have brethren Members of the Lord's Church talking about, well, it's okay to social drink. It's okay to go to the prom. And you look at the way they're dressed in the prom, uh, on, on the prom pictures and stuff like that, the way they're dressed, they don't teach on any kind of, of modesty either. So much for the rigid moral and ethical demands. But he says th this is one of their characteristics. But notice this right here. He said they have a messianic complex of being the true people of God and the true church. And he said all of these factors combined to give them a motivation, an unquenchable zeal, and an inescapable compulsion to win the world to an acceptance of their convictions. You know what he's saying? He's telling the Baptist church that they need to have a messianic complex, that they need to, be, to believe that they're the one true people of God. Now, friends, let me tell you, I have that conviction. I have that belief. And that's why I'm telling you, you cannot be saved in a church that a man built, that a man established, and it is not included in the body of Christ. Now, friends, it used to be, it used to be that when people believed in something that they were convicted that it was the best, it was right. And see, now we can't say no to anybody. We can't tell anybody they're wrong. You know, like we showed a, a few weeks ago. You know, people, people are so unconvicted about truth, they can't even tell a five foot nine man that he's not a six foot five China woman, Chinese woman. That's just how weak they are about not uh, 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 telling someone the truth. But see, here's what's true, friends. The church of Jesus Christ is the one true church. Christians are only found in the church of Christ. They're only found in the church of Christ. I find it very interesting when people say, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And I'm in the Baptist church. Well, you're not a Christian, you're a Baptist. Go ahead and own up to it. Be proud of it. 
If you're a Baptist, go ahead and say, I'm proud of it. I'm a Baptist. If you're, if you're a Mormon, go ahead and be proud of it. Say, hey, I'm, a, I'm a Mormon. If you're a Methodist, be proud of it. Own it up. Own up to it. I'm a, I'm a Methodist. I'm proud of it. Don't, don't cower down and say, well, I'm a Christian. Oh, no. So you can't be, you can't be part of the exclusive church and then turn around and then turn around and ex- include everybody else. See, this doesn't make any, make any sense. It's contradictory to say that one church is the only exclusive church and the rest are included. Somebody's saying, well, every church is okay. And the person that says that then turns around and says, well, some churches are okay because they exclude the Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, maybe the Pentecostals, depending on who you talk to, maybe the Catholics, depending on who you talk to. And then they say, well, only one church is okay. But when they say this, they mean everybody except those few people they excluded. Friends, that just doesn't make any sense. You can't say every church is okay and include the people that say only one church is okay. Why do you condemn me? You know, if you're going to let everybody in the fold of, of the one true church, why do you turn around and condemn me when I say no? Everybody's not included in the fold. Everybody's not included in the church of Christ. So you just can't have, you just can't have a, a church that is exclusive and inclusive at the same time. See, there's only one church that is okay. There's only one church that is true. There's only one church that is the church you read about in the Bible. The only kind of church you read about in the Bible is the church that Jesus died for, friends. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, <clears throat> and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now I'm going to ask you, friends, what church did Jesus build? Upon this rock I'll build my church. What church? Whose church was it? It belonged to Jesus. It was his church. Now, that excludes Peter's church. Paul's church. Right? Apollos' church. Which is exactly what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He said, I'm here and there's divisions among you. He said, some saying that I'm a Paul, I'm of an Apollos, and I'm of Cephas, and I'm of Christ. Is Christ divided? No. But if Christ is not divided, why is it then that we're supposed to accept the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Pentecostals as part of the body of Christ? They're not part of the only church. The church is the body of Christ, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Christ is the head over the church, which is his body. Now, friends, that excludes all other bodies and all other churches. And the only the saved are in that church, are in that body. Friends, if you're outside the body of Christ, you're lost. Now, you can become a member of the exclusive, one and only church by being obedient to the gospel. Hearing the gospel, believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If you have so much faith and conviction that the church you're in is right, why don't you find it in the faith? Why don't you find it in the truth? If you believe it's right, find it in the truth. We have a standing $1,000 offer. Anybody can find more than one kind of church in, in this Bible that's authorized for you to be a part of today. You just can't find it. You can't find a Baptist church. $1,000 a year, find a Baptist church in the Bible. $1,000 a year, find a Pentecostal church in the Bible. Can't find it. You can't even really find, you can't find the church of God denomination in the Bible. People say, oh, the church of God's in the Bible. You, not the church of God that's headquartered in Cleveland, Tennessee. No, it's not in the Bible. One pastor, women preachers, instrumental music, that's not, that's not the church in the Bible. Doesn't look anything like it. 
Therefore, I know that it is excluded from being part of the one true church. Now, friends, do you love Christ enough to be part of his church, part of his body? If we can help you, we want to do that. If you really want to be part of the one true church, be included in the exclusive, one-of-a-kind church of the Bible, please call me. Let me know. Word from the Lord, gmail.com or 276-340-2653. We'd love to, love to see you, love to study with you. We'll meet at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. for Bible study and worship on Sundays and 7 p.m. Thursdays. For Bible study at 250 the Boulevard. Friends, if we can help you find the one true church and become a member, an exclusive member of the great body of Christ, we want to do that very thing. All you need to do is seek and you'll find. Make sure what you're looking for and what you get your answers from is a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Huh?